Good evening. I'm not sure if there's anyone there yet. I'm running a bit late. Let's set this up so we're not moving all the time. That's better. My apologies. I'm going to pour a cup of tea. So give us a wave, whoever's there. I was rushing there this evening, so it's running a bit late. Oh, there was someone there. We had someone there, but they've disappeared. That's okay. So let me just um, look at, we got a few questions today. So let me just see what we um, will be speaking about this evening. I didn't get much of a chance to look at everything. I know of a few questions, so. <clears throat> so where am I? <laughs> Urinary tract infections, cold sores, and um, what else have we got? We had also um, a couple of questions here on Instagram. Double check before we go any further. I know someone was asking about histamine intolerance. And there was one other. What was that other one? Where is it? Maybe it's on Facebook. I don't see anybody there at the moment, so we'll just hang on. There. Yeah, same one there earlier about sleep apnea. Someone was asking about sleep apnea as well. So, yeah, let's get started. <clears throat> You know, I, I've been thinking about these questions that are coming the last few weeks, and my answers always seem to be around diet, which is very, very important, as we all know. And um, if we're not living on proper food, we're going to eventually feel the effects um, one way or the other. It's going to get us in the end. It'll cause us to put weight on it, will cause us to be sluggish, it will cause organs to be sluggish. You know, think internally what goes on when, when you're not working with a good diet in your life. But why all the different ailments? You know, we've three good questions there for it, actually, because um, you have the sleep apnea, you have the histamine issue, you have the urinary tract issue and you have cold sores. Yeah. So, you know, I could go back over the weeks that I've just done and say to you, well, look at the diet information I was giving. And basically what it is, is are you living on processed food? Are you not, not literally living on it, but is it a big part of your diet? And if it is, it's going to interfere with how um, well your systems work in your body. So these these things can be quite related in a way, in a funny way, although they are different ailments, they can just be related to an imbalance within your organ system. You know, we have so many systems in our body um, and when the organs are, begin to get sluggish, you're going to run into trouble. So let's look at that rather than individual cases. And though you guys who ask the questions, then if this makes sense to you, well, then maybe you have something that you can work with. But first and foremost, the the, the cold sore thing, if it's something that's coming all the time, you know, regularly, it's usually to do with the herpes virus. So it's a viral infection in the body. What happens with that particular virus is it gets deep rooted in the base of the spine. So that's where you have to treat it. 
if you're not getting it with antibiotics or the usual processes of working with viruses um, look at things like a great antiviral to use regularly is colloidal silver and you can get it out there just get the best one you can get your hands on um, I, it's something I use myself all the time. The one I use, I buy it from America, and I have shared it with people, but it's it's a little bit awkward for me to get a lot of it in at, at one time because it comes in quite a big bottle, it's quite heavy, it's quite costly because of the weight in the post and that. But you can get good silver around, um, and that's a really good way to walk with forests. So... The, another way I know for sure if if cold sores are coming regular and it's something that's really bothering you. Now you'll have to look this up because it's it's a long time since I looked it up. It's something that was um I learned many, many years ago, going back maybe 20 years ago. Sorry, give me a second. My glasses are a bit dull. <laughs> um but it's to do a hydrogen peroxide and putting drops of it on the base of your spine and that can get in and clear out the virus very easily i believe i don't know anyone who's done it but that information came to me from a very very good um nutritionist someone who i have a lot of respect for i've followed him for years and years um, and i remember him speaking about that many many years ago so look that up i'm sure that information is on the internet um, just look up the herpes virus with hydrogen peroxide and where to it's just a matter of putting small amounts on the base of your spine but please look it up don't just do it willy-nilly these you have to know what you're doing when you're doing these things properly and if you do them properly they may well work and clear that for your area system so and um, yeah that's the best way to treat it you can keep treating it topically but if it's an internal thing that and especially if it's down deep rooted at the base of your spine that's why a lot of treatments don't get to it they they you might get temporary relief but you actually need to get right down to the root cause of it and um, and that i believe is a very good way to do it use the silver on them topically you can take the silver internally as well and it'll get into your system and go deep as well but silver for any virus is is well known to um have very powerful effects but like i say get the best one you can get you know a lot of times things like that are they you they might look overpriced but there's a reason usually that they're overpriced um because they're usually good a lot of the stuff that is on the shelves and you would have heard me saying this as well recently just isn't worth spending your money on so just be careful you know inquire ask the people about what you're buying and then um, tell them what you're looking for in the in these health stores or on, go online look up reviews do all that sort of thing and um, that's what i constantly do if i see something and i it looks interesting and um I go to independent reviews first and see what's going on with it. Take the public's um, experience on it or see what people are doing with it and see what they're saying about it. So, yeah, yeah. So let me move on to the other um, three questions. So we had the histamine problem, histamine intolerance. We had the sleep apnea and we had the... What's the other one? Cold sores histamine. Oh, urinary tract infection. Well, again, infection, you have something similar going on. You have a breakdown. One thing I know for sure, um, it's funny how when people are older, especially in old folks' homes, you see an awful lot of trouble with urinary tract um, issues, urinary tracts, tract infections something my own mother went through and it was very very simple to heal for them it, you know when the care was done properly and basically how you healed it was it was all to do with um hydration and you know when people are older like that and they're in a home and they're not capable of going and getting a glass of water and drinking it the, it's not something that's paid much attention to they, to keep them they hydrate them with tea it, that doesn't work and um, dehydrate them with other liquids you know you need 
you need water with cranberry juice is good for clearing out those infections in the urinary tract and um, i'd be definitely putting silver in as well um, and really really looking at hydration lots you know plenty of water flush the whole system get the kidneys functioning properly and then um, look at it that way but i i see a relationship with these issues and what's as i looked at it as i said today and i looked at the different questions i was thinking hmm i could just revert back to a conversation i had a couple of weeks ago talking about um low carb eating and things like that so let's let's look a little bit at the like your histamine problem the histamine intolerance is definitely to do with the gut not fun functioning properly but it's also had it has a huge part the liver is playing a huge part in it as well so when you look at sleep apnea as well and um, and i don't know who this person is who the question is being asked about so but my guess would be and please correct me if i'm wrong get in touch with me privately and we'll have that conversation but um most people i know that have sleep apnea or struggle with sleep apnea seem to be overweight um, i'm not saying that's the cause of it but it i i'm thinking off the top of my head the people that i do know and the people i know have gotten past it and the people i know have gotten past it on their own basically because they didn't want to stay on that machine for god knows the rest of their lives and um, were people who decided to take it into their own hands and drop weight now there i know a couple of people who did it and they were quite heavy and when they dropped the weight down by a few stone bang they didn't need the sleep apnea machine anymore now another thing i'd say is think about this it's absolute common sense what do they do for sleep apnea they give you that mask to wear during the night and you're, you're basically breathing in pure oxygen or fresh oxygen well one of the things we all need to understand is that we've lost touch with how to breathe properly and a lot me included i'm guilty of this one but it said that we're we're all breathing through our mouths these days and what we really should be doing is breathing through our nose our mouth isn't for breathing it although we can breathe through it <sighs> yes we can do that and um, but what we really should be doing is breathing through our nose and training ourselves to breathe through our nose and really practicing it so if if you're struggling with sleep apnea and you want to try some little tricks like that what i'd suggest doing is if you if you have weight to lose well have a serious look at losing the weight and um, and here i revert back to the, the liver being involved it's always involved in so many things and um, if you're overweight it's because you're eating the wrong food like i said a few weeks ago and it's usually to do with too much carbs within the diet and the problem is you're not burning the fuel off that you're eating therefore your body will store it as fat for a time that you may need it and then it'll burn it up but if you're not someone who's out there exercising you know the the thing about too much carbs in the diet the the funny thing is a lot of athletes use carbs to fuel them to give them energy and that's great because it does work that way it gives you energy and you burn you go out and burn it off and that's great that's fine if you're an athlete if you're someone who's training regular even part-time you know athlete training a few times a week at the gym that's great you'll burn off your carbohydrate intake intake if you're if you're aware of that and um, if you're someone who isn't training and you're just getting up on a daily basis heading off to work doing whatever you're doing work coming home and doing the things we do end up sitting in front of the tv at night you know and not actually getting up and burning off that carbohydrate intake you're going to put on weight if you're someone who then starts to get sluggish in your body you can't breathe as well as you should your oxygen levels are changing and um, and therefore you run into a problem like sleep apnea think of it that way because then you can take control over it and you can actually look at 
losing the weight, changing your diet and taking care of it in a way that will benefit you for the long term. And um, also practice your breathing. The, the thing about uh, sleep apnea, you'll probably find if you have a partner that you're lying with your mouth open at night and you're breathing through your mouth. And therefore, this is where the whole um, stopping the breath and almost choking the death on it. So start practicing breathing through your nose. How, how do you do that? Um, a, a great way athletes do it is, let's say you have an athlete who's going to go out and run around the track. He's going to do 10 laps of the track. And um, what some of them do is they'll take a glass of water and they'll throw the water, but they won't, they won't swallow it. They'll throw it in, but they won't swallow it. They'll hold it in the mouth and they go run. And at the end of the run, the water is still in the mouth. So they haven't swallowed it. So it's forcing them to breathe through the nose. And over time, the benefits of that in your body, it, if I remember correctly, I think we get 25% more oxygen into our blood when we just breathe through the nose. So it's part of the problem is mouth breathing. And if you can under, understand that and learn how to correct it, there is simple ways to correct it. Okay, if you're not someone who does your laps, um, you can walk around the house with water in your mouth for 20 minutes. Start off slow. Do it for five minutes, just spit the water out and force yourself to breathe through your nose um, and see what happens and build that up over time. And then another thing you can do going to bed at night. Now, please, this needs months of training, obviously, and time for you to get used to that nasal breathing. But then you can start looking at just taping your mouth, just gently, very gently together, just putting a piece of tape across the lips to keep your mouth closed while you're asleep. Not forcing it closed, not tying it down or typing it this way that you'll blow up during the night, but doing it properly, you know. Um, but again, practice it during the day, during your waking hours. Even go for a short walk with water in your mouth. And if it gets too much, just spit it out. It's fine, you know. It Everything like this takes time to build it up. So think about it that way for your sleep apnea. But also... Um, we need to look at the liver and we need to look at looking after a liver. We need to look at maybe detoxing the liver, maybe, you know, just looking at a liver cleanse and um, things like that can really help because it is the most powerful organ in our body. It's the hardest worker. And like I said, these questions were in my mind were quite related, like the urinary tract is definitely going to have a hydration issue in there but you know if we're not hydrated we're not cleansing properly so therefore what happens is the liver it's like a big filter and as it starts to filter stuff out it sends the liquid on down into the it'll end up in the kidneys the kidneys like a filtration system and then you have the urinary tract after that so it's what's getting through the organs are sluggish those filters if they're working properly and they're clean and um, you won't get these infections then it's it's all about cleaning those organs up so and the same goes for the histamine issue our body needs histamine it's a huge part of of our systems working so to have a histamine intolerance um usually means things are breaking down so maybe look at where you've been in your life in the sense of um what have you been doing this goes for the 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 three and even for question with the viral load um you know where have you actually been in your life in the sense of what have you been doing i, I know there's no children watching these because I, I put it up that it's not for children. So I'm assuming we're all adults sitting here, if there is anybody sitting there. Um, so when I say where have you been, what I mean is what have you been doing over the years? You know, have you been abusing yourself? And immediately when we think of abuse, we think of alcohol, we think of cigarettes, we think of drugs. But 
people forget about food as well. So have an honest look at where you've been in your life up to this point. What has brought the issue to you? Um, why is the liver sluggish? Why is the bowel not working properly? Leaky gut is an issue with um, the histamine intolerance. What happens is it's the, I spoke about this again, when we swallow food, our stomach acid has to break it down, literally liquefy it. Um, then it goes on into the small intestine and the wall of the small intestine is covered in millions, if not billions of tiny little microscopic hairs called, they look like hairs called villi. The villi absorb the nutrients from our food because the stomach acid has broken down. That goes into the bloodstream, down into the liver and down and so on into the organs. Um, and that's where, how we get our nutrition. If the stomach acid is imbalanced, they're not working properly, you haven't got enough of it. And um, what happens is it doesn't break the foods down as well as it should. Bigger particles get into the small intestine. The, the villi will always try to absorb. And um, when the particles are too big, it causes inflammation within the, the small intestine. Therefore, we end up with leaky gut. And now you're going to get toxicity going into your body. And where does it go? It goes into the liver. So the connection there is huge. Um, it's funny, I, I was just listening to a podcast the other day and I was listening to this, what was he actually? Um, I'm not sure if he was a scientist, I think he was. And let me see, can I find this guy's name while I'm speaking? But basically what he was speaking about was um, toxicity. He was speaking about um, heavy metals in the body and how we can rid ourselves of them. And one of the subjects he was speaking about was um, he got big into mercury poisoning. He got big into, um, uh, there's a lot of metals in that word, even breathing in that were working around the environment is carrying them and our body can't deal with them when there's an overload and that can make the liver very sluggish. And he got into that in great detail, but um, let me just see, um, can I, I have him here. What was he, Thomas Lay project? I don't know. No, I can't find his name. No, that's not him. I just, if I, I, it'd be too awkward to find his name. So let's just, he's, he was a very interesting character to listen to. And I'm assuming he was a scientist because he was developing um, medicine, natural medicines in, in a lab and getting um, tests done, proper testing done um, with groups of people. And he got into all this talking about um, toxicity in the body viruses you name it he he had this is he had a he had made a compound and he was getting incredible results with it um, and he was getting incredible results with memory brain fog with autism with liver issues um, what else did he get into? He got into a lot, a lot of stuff. It was just a very interesting conversation. But the sad thing about it was when he presented all his work to the FDA in America, he was in America, obviously his lab is in America. They refused to take his work any further. They, they refused to rubber stamp it so he could go public with it. So he could basically get it out to the world. And the funny thing he was talking about, so if if you're looking for answers to these questions and um, he was talking in depth about glutathione and glutathione in the body and how important it is and what he was saying his compound was doing was helping the body to produce glutathione which it does but as we get older it struggles to do that in an unhealthy person um, and i think i said this a few weeks ago as well 
it's it's a known fact that when we're older, if you get your glutathione levels measured, they can almost predict how long you're going to last, it, depending on your glutathione levels. levels. The liver produces glutathione is very important for it. It's also very important sleep apnea, very important, important for your lungs, helps us to breathe. It's actually in all the cells in our body. So it's a very, very important compound that we need to understand and know about because all these questions, it helps with viruses. It helps to strengthen the immune system in a big way. And it's, it's known as the most powerful antioxidant known to man. Now, what is an antioxidant? If you think about it, oxidation is, if you cut an apple in half or an avocado and you leave it out and you watch it oxidize, it'll go brown. So antioxidant stops that. Now, every living thing, if it's just left there, will die off and rot and so on and so on. And um, you hear you hear this all the time that's blueberries powerful antioxidant and so on all these foods are antioxidants well the most powerful one is glutathione so if you're struggling with health issues it's something that can help immensely with health issues particularly when the liver is involved which it almost always is so um look at working with glutathione for yourself in these in all these cases and um, i do and um, again i'm the information i'm giving you here it's it, it was all fresh to me listening to this man the other day but even though the compound he said he has developed and the fda will not let him release it even even though they were seeing such powerful results with it the next best thing is going to be a liposomal form of glutathione and even he was comparing it to his compounds and he said there is no comparison what he has now developed and what's being held back from us is something even more powerful than liposomal but in the meantime we have liposomal i do sell a very good one it's on my website markleary.net um, and I'd, I'd say to any of you, especially this time of year, coming into the winter to help with your immune system, to help with your liver function, even do three months of it. And it's a very powerful tool to have in your system. If you're having lung problems, very powerful as well. But if you're, ha if you, if you're someone who's good and healthy and you just want to give yourself a boost, that, that glutathione on its own, yeah, work away. With these issues we're talking about tonight, you will definitely need in the case of the histamine intolerance because it's an inflammatory disorder as well you will need your curcumin as well or something as powerful as something it, you know look at the powerful um anti-inflammatories out there excuse me again glutathione is no sorry curcumin is quite possibly the most powerful one, especially if you get it in a liposomal form. Um, CBD oil, good CBD oil. The, the, so, the market is flooded with it now, so it's very important you find good ones. Again, I they're not on my website, but I have them at the clinic. I always stock good CBD oils at the clinic because it's such a powerful um, anti-inflammatory. It also builds a system under our nervous system that helps to boost everything so it's a real good product to be taken but what i'm saying is with the issues you're dealing with here tonight glutathione on the own may not be enough so think curcumin or maybe cbd and um, always think magnesium and be uh, b complex vitamin b complex it's really good for boosting the nervous system so think about things like that if you want to have a look at maybe healing these issues but always 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 changing your diet looking at your diet being honest with yourself have a look at what you've done in the past ask yourself how real how toxic are you you know and um, what have you actually done have you do, if let's say in your 20s you were partying like we all did in our 20s and then um you haven't done anything in the meantime to really do deep cleanses in your body well maybe you're carrying toxicity from those days and uh, look at the environment you walk in look at all these things and um, with the mercury issue have you got mercury in your fillings and um, 
he went that man i never heard anybody speak so in depth about that as he did the other day on that podcast and he, he seemed very um determined to let the world know particularly with brain health how that can affect brain health brain fog fatigue all these things so um yeah we're, we're, we're if i if i just get deep into the diet again which i've already done over the weeks it'll be, i'll be boring here all the time so what i'd like to get into here is um who who are we who you know who are the people who are asking these questions and um, if you if you can have a real proper honest look at yourself and um, and ask yourself right one th one thing i know for sure is this the medical industry is a huge huge industry making billions every year on sick people and when i hear a man like the guy that was talking the other day that I was listening to and to hear him say and to hear him being so upset about it so angry about it so um reluctant to to say bad things about the fda but asking questions asking deep questions as to why this is being blocked when all the testing had been done on it when it was absolutely um there was absolute proof that it wasn't toxic to anybody and um, they were he was saying to you, this is this is what he was talking about he said um we know mercury in high doses can kill us okay so obviously in labs they they test for animals and he was saying with the lab rats they were giving them huge doses of mercury such high doses that the the rat will be expected to die within hours and um, but they were immediately following it with the compound that he had and the rats were living long term and he said they kept them long term to see would there be any effects like later months down the road would the rats develop cancer or other illnesses or diseases and he said no they were good and healthy months later this is how they test and um, then he brought it to humans. He, he has friends who are doctors and he had doctors giving it out to patients. And they also did um, trials themselves that they, they were able to do. And they were able to present all this work to the FDA and the FDA should close the door on it. Now, the reason he was saying they closed the door on it is because it was a natural substance. So what I, what I will say to you is, um, can we really truly trust these industries i'm not speaking about your doctors who are usually lovely guys i'm talking about the actual industry itself and um, if we were all to get healthy tomorrow if we were all to do it the you know take responsibility for ourselves and actually turn our diseases and illnesses around if we were capable of doing that and um, these industries would be no longer needed so is there something in there that's stopping um, people like that guy releasing good, natural, non-toxic products to us um, in a way that we could have a big effect on all these illnesses? So when I say, who are you? What I mean is, are you willing to take responsibility for yourselves? Um, are you willing to become your own doctor? Are you willing to look at what you've done in the past up to this point in your life, what you're doing at the moment? And, um, you know, actually take responsibility for yourself. To look at it in ways that, um, let me get into this way. <clears throat> I know when I teach and I talk to people, one of the things I'm trying to really get across to people day, these days is how much respect do you have for yourself? And I mean that in a way that um, if you buy something new, like a new car, and you keep polishing it and looking after it, and when it's service is due, it's for service, you'll take it to the best garage, and get the service done to keep it in a uh, pristine um, condition. But do we do that for ourselves? That's what I mean when I say, do you have respect for who you truly are? 
um, because if you do, if if we look back in on ourselves like that, which let's be honest, most of us don't do. Um, if we were to really look at ourselves and think, do I honor who I am on a daily basis? Then I may have the possibility of healing the issues that I'm carrying. Because we can talk about diet, we can talk about medications, we can talk about all the things that assist us getting healthy. But the core issue here is, who are you? Who's the person emotionally who's got sick or who's carrying these issues? You know, um, have you ever paid attention to that in a truly proper way of nurturing who you are, nurturing yourself, taking care of yourself? Or are you burning yourself into the ground? Are you stressed out? Are you working too hard? You know, are you are you stuck in a job that's literally destroying you, killing you, wearing you down, having you working too many hours? Are you coming home to a family and being busy with the family and then just falling into, into bed exhausted that night? Are you waking up exhausted in the morning? You know, are you stressed? You know, most people, when I talk about stress, and they say, I'm not stressed. And a lot of them go, I'm not stressed. <laughs> And there's the answer for you, you know. So let's be honest about this. Look at what you're doing in life. Look at what you've done to the point that you're at right now in life. If you're struggling with ailments and illness. And start addressing that end of it. Now I know you might say, but I have a mortgage to pay. And I have fa family to feed and so on and so on. And yes, we do. We all have that. We all have these things going on. But... It's very easy to get stuck, very, very easy to think that there's no other way. And the truth of it is there always is a way. It's like um, if you're, if you're working, let's say you're working too many hours in the week to earn X amount of money, what are you using the money for? Sorry, my dog's going to bark now because the bin man's just pulled up. So my apologies. Um, I'm sure he's going to go. Just give me one sec. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, he loves to bark at the minimum. <laughs> so, yeah. If you, are you, are you overworking to earn extra money? And have you ever had an honest look at what you're spending that extra money on? Are the things that you're working towards gaining worth your health? That's what I'm saying to you here. Um, now, I know we all have the basic things that we need to take care of, like the mortgage and um, the family. I would, if Are you the breadwinner? You know, if you are, well, then great. You're doing a great job. But, you know, you can't be a breadwinner if you get sick. So do you, do you ever look at what am I actually doing in life? You know, am I taking care of me within all that? within that stressful environment that life gives the trolls at us all the time. And um, if you're someone who isn't looking at yourself to take care of yourself, let's say you are the breadwinner. Let's say, you know, you have a great family, you have a wife who's staying at home to look after the children because that's a great thing to do. And um, you've brought children into the world. You want to give them the best um, future possible. So out you go to work and you're, working all the hours God, God sends you. You're getting home, tired at night, barely getting time to get them into bed. To you, you might be just getting home on time to get them into bed, to not spend real quality time with them. At the weekends when the quality time comes, you're tired because you've overworked. You know, are you someone who's doing that? And are you someone who's been doing that for years? And now are you someone who's suffering with ailments because of these issues? Because when you're out there working hard like that, and it, you know it can be both people in a family, and um, you're definitely not going to be eating well. You're definitely not going to be looking after yourself well. So this is what I'm speaking about. Who are you? What are you doing in your life? Where are you heading towards illness? Have you reached illness right now? 
And if so, you've gone to the doctor, he's given you medication, maybe it's not working for you. And, um, you know, most medications, if not all, all they do is maintain illness. They support the illness. They don't actually cure it. So if you're looking towards cures, you have to look at, usually the cures comes with natural solutions, but your natural solutions won't work if you're still doing all the stressful stuff. So we have to take responsibility for ourselves in all these issues. So it's very important that you hear that. It's very important that you can hear that because really and truly that's where it all starts. You know, you can go out spending money, you can buy supplements, you can change your diet, but emotionally, how are you? You know, and I mean emotional stress. When we're caught up in emotional stress and we're working too hard or we're too busy, what's usually happening then is our thought process is telling us that they're not liking what we're doing. Um, and then that bounces back to almost like I don't like myself. And therefore, there's no nurturing in that. So my head is stressed, my mind is stressed, my thoughts are all about stress. I have to do this again tomorrow. I have to do this again tomorrow. I hate going into that job. I end up fighting with the people in work. I hate the people I work with, so on. It just becomes this vicious cycle. And then boom, an illness pops up. Now, hopefully the illness that has popped up is something that can be dealt with. That's great. But sometimes the illness that pops up after after many years of this is something that's quite serious, like a heart attack, and I don't get a second chance. So, you know, what I'm saying to you, and I haven't spoke about this really in depth, is are you looking after number one? And you might say, I don't have time for that because I'm busy doing X, Y, and Z for the family. Well, what happens when you're gone? Will the family just go with you or will they survive without you? The truth is they'll usually survive without you. So why not be part of that? Why not pull back a little? Why not sit down and have discussions about it? Why am I working so hard? Why am I doing all this? Um, why, why are we both working so hard? What, what are we actually trying to achieve here? Other than, you know, are we missing out on the good stuff? because we're actually too stressed and working too hard, you know? So, um, yeah, think about that for a moment. You know, I, I've, I spoke to two people today, older people who are struggling with quite serious illness at the moment. And, you know, these, these illnesses, when we get to that point in life, are, it's almost impossible to reverse them. Um, so, you know, as you as you do what I'm talking about, and you just we're all getting older every day. As we get older, these issues, it's it's almost like it's it's not the age thing, it's the length of time we've been working on our stress, the length of time we've been building up our stress. Think about that for a moment. Um think about what have you been doing to yourself and are you going to if you've hit an illness, are you going to continue doing it? Or are you you know it, if you're going to go to the doctor and get your medication, fine. You'll probably just keep trotting along. And then in a year's time or two years time, you'll add another medication and so on and so on. And many people, you know, that are on six and eight tablets a day for different reasons. Some of the tablets are counteracting the effects of some of the tablets that they're on. Do you want to get caught up in the hamster wheel? I know I don't personally. So it's a big part to play in any illness is the emotional state of the person all the time every time it's i've been doing the work i do for 30 years now and i'm absolutely 100 percent convinced that the the deep rooted issue with all these illnesses is emotional stress and it comes in so many guises and um, i know people struggle with relationships i know they struggle with family and um, they struggle with work they struggle with so many different issues but it's like the illnesses it all comes back to the one thing if 
let's say I'm in a stressful relationship and I'm terrified to walk away from it. So I stay in the stressful relationship and I just keep getting more stressed. I'm in a job that I hate. I hate doing it. I see no way out, but there's always a way out. You know, we can we can do things to find other jobs. We we really can. It's just that we get stuck. There's always a way. We're all quite um, switched on and intelligent when we really need to do, need to do things. Um, and the funny thing is we go out on a limb to help others, especially close family members, but we don't be prepared to go out on that limb to help ourselves. So look at your stress levels in all these issues. They have got a big part to play. And it's why, you know, you see so many people saying, oh, I tried taking that, I tried taking this and it didn't work. That didn't work for me, that didn't work for me. And when you get to know the person, you absolutely see why, because they did nothing else. They think there's no magic in a pill, whether it's a tablet from your doctor or whether it's a supplement that you get in the health store, whether it's the most natural compound on the planet, it will not work if your stress levels are hitting the roof. So look at that aspect for yourself. Now, if you're someone who has gone and you're doing all that end of things it takes time to make changes it takes time to de-stress yourself fully so give the natural process time excuse me um if you're if you're let's say you're 40 year old and you're struggling right now at the moment well think about it's taken 40 years to get to this point you're not going to change it in a month you're not going to change it in two months you're not going to change it in one bottle of supplements so always be prepared to give it time and um, start off set a target for yourself of three months and if you clear your health issue in the three month period well done that's a bonus but put your markers down to how you feel at the beginning check in in a month's time how are you feeling right now is there even a slight improvement worth working on two months time check in three months time have a big check in with yourself but take notes of where you were at the beginning because it's so easy to forget how unwell you were, how stressed you were. And um, look back on it in three months' time and then set another three months. And give, then six months' time, look back and so on and so on. What these issues need is lifestyle changes. You know, they don't need changes for a couple of months and then I revert back to what I was doing that got me there in the first place. That is only going to do one thing, bring back the, the ailment. So really and truly think about that and have a look at it. And it doesn't mean, you know, I know people think, oh, I have to go and meditate every day. I have to I have to do yoga. I have to do this. I have to do that. No, it doesn't mean all them things. It just means taking time out for you taking responsibility for yourself having conversations with the people who are close to you and you know speaking about how you truly feel and um, working it out getting support within the issue for yourself but with from the people who are closest to you and and um, you know lots of times people won't speak because they don't want to burden others but true friends are there to support us they will listen and then they may share their problems with you and you can both be in it together. You can move forward together and stuff like that. It just gets, we get so bogged down with all these things. We get so stuck that we're almost afraid to let the words come out of our mouths then about how we're truly feeling. Um, so think about all these things around ailments. Why have I got to this point right now? Why am I struggling? Why am I suffering? What is truly going on inside me? Because the truth of it is, the doctors are too busy to actually even have these types of conversations with you. Um, they, they really, truly are too busy. All they seem to be doing nowadays is writing prescriptions. In you know, you go in, you tell the doctor what's wrong, he writes a prescription or she writes a prescription. And you go off, you take those pills, they don't work, I go back, it's another one, and so on and so on and so on. What you're doing there is giving away responsibility for yourself. And we have been educated and guided towards doctors. And good doctors are 
just they're so few and far between these days because they are just so busy you wouldn't believe um so think about how can you help your doctor by doing the things i just said i before i came on and thinking of the two people i was chatting to today and um, you know what you're dealing with there was cancer and um, and i remember a number of years ago i went off on a skiing trip <clears throat> on my own and um I decided to book into this with this company who run group to group trips. So I ended up staying in a chalet on the mountain with another 10 people. And the reason I did it that way is because they provide a chef and I knew we'd be sitting to breakfast and dinner every bre breakfast, every morning, dinner, every evening. And then it's, you know, they provide all alcohol and anything that's needed. So I knew we'll be sitting around having a drink at the end of the day and I'll get to, it'll be a very easy way to get to know people traveling on my own. So it just so happened there was a couple there. They were, um, they were in their sixties, I'd say, and husband and wife and both of them were GPs. The wife actually wrote articles for the Irish Times, very, very interesting person, very, really lovely to speak to, very educated woman. And um, we had great conversations, <laughs> me and her, we, we got on great to three of us, we went for meals together and all that. So it was lovely to meet them. But this baffled me, this absolutely baffled me. And um, the, the house was a big house and I had a mezzanine. And one of the evenings, all the lads went upstairs and all the girls stayed downstairs, but we were on a mezzanine, so we could hear what was being said. And we're just ha lightheartedly having chats about nothing important. And inevitably, someone downstairs, it could have happened upstairs because we had a doctor at the table as well. But the conversation came around cancer with this doctor. And like I said, she was... She wasn't just your normal GP. She was writing articles for the Irish Times. She was doing a lot of work in the public. Um, and somebody said to her, I, I heard this. I, I, I lost my attention with the lads because I wanted to hear what was going on downstairs. And the question was, or the conversation was something like this. Um, somebody said to her, there, there must be a cure for cancer out there. And it's being blocked by because a pharmaceutical company selling medication and blah 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 the usual story and um you know they were saying what's your opinion on it and this was the answer she gave she said look as far as i'm concerned if you get cancer you're just unlucky it's like you you drew the short straw and that was her answer she had no other answer to it and that blew me away to hear such an educated person high up in the medical system. And that was her opinion of cancer, that if you get it, you're just unlucky. And what I'm saying to you here tonight is the stress levels that people are under these days are phenomenal. And they have a huge part to play in all their illnesses because stress affects our emotions and our emotional being is a very, very important part of who we are, probably the most important. And when you're constantly thinking stress, it has an effect on stress hormones in the body and it blocks off the good hormones. And over time, it will break you down and it will present illnesses to you. So have a good look at that part of your life when you're looking for answers to these ailments. And if you can be honest with yourself and look at your stress levels and start to break them down, you'll probably find that your body relaxes more as you do nice things for it, as you feed it well, I just start to respect it like you would your new car. Do the right things for it. Put the good oil into it. Put the good petrol into it. Put new tires on it when it needs and get it serviced when it needs it. Reverse it and do it from the inside for yourself. 
nobody else will do it for you and take it from there and see what begins to happen so like i said you know it doesn't happen overnight but it's quite possible for everybody to heal anything that they're carrying if they take responsibility for being the creator of it whether that was through your stress levels or whatever and um, think about that i'll leave it on that note it's almost an hour and um hope you enjoyed the conversation and i'll see you all next week thanks for listening